Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, sorry there was no morning coffee break. Um, I just didn't feel like getting in front of the camera at this time. I, you know, I, I got the Leaper update, flea market update in, but I just, nah, I don't know, I couldn't get back in front of the camera, so I figured, um, and I was just going to let it slide, but I figure, no, I keep telling everybody I'm going to continue to do my coffee break, so. I've had people ask me about coming over and showing them, showing them the arcade again, since I haven't, haven't done it for a while. Uh, there's a lot of new, new subscribers that have not seen the arcade, and, you know, because they don't, a lot of people don't go back and look, look at the, a lot of my other videos that I have. So, figured, uh, why not? I'll come over and show you the arcade. I have a few things I wanted to do over here this morning, so I, I figured I'd come over and do that and get a coffee break in, in this evening. That way I don't have to get in front of the camera. I can stay back here and, and be a little more, uh, I guess, comfortable, so to speak. All right, anyway. Uh, front door, we come in the front door here, and this is kind of our retail area that we're kind of setting up again. It, you know, it, it was kind of really slow when we first set up the retail, and we pulled everything out and took it back down to the to Leaper, and then we started having people asking again for stuff, so we're going to, we started putting some stuff back in, stuff that we know that sells, and we can keep keep this stuff in here in stock and hopefully we will move a little bit more of this uh, right now the retail and arcade is closed uh, the season is over so we kind of so I said I had a few things I have to do over here uh, to get everything kind of buttoned up for the for the winter uh, and you know these are my PA skill games I have three of them in here uh, I have one of the tall ones and two of the originals. Uh, those two uh, do really well. So the, the big one, they're really playing the big one a lot more. Uh, they just, you know, because it's a newer machine and they like the newer stuff. Coin Pusher, if you remember, a lot of you probably don't. I bought this when I had the store in town and I had it running in there and I brought it with me. I had it in storage and brought it back out. This I bought brand new so you know there's there was no repair no videos on this I don't think except for probably me setting it up. Uh, you can see you know full quarters and I have usually have a 20 and a 5 in it. Uh, I think next season I'm gonna stick a 50 right in the middle. Uh, it you know kinda attracts people to, to actually play the coin pusher not allowed to let the kids play it. Uh, I guess other places do, but um, state law is that kids cannot play coin pusher because it's actually a gambling machine. I guess it could probably, if you did some other stuff with it, use tokens and you know, people, and the kids could win uh, trading cards and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not real sure I didn't check into it. I just keep mine as a quarter pusher. Our 477 Rockola Jukebox. Uh, you have seen this sitting in my garage for huh, probably years. This one I picked up uh, way back. And I had it, um, you know, I fixed it. There's videos on it. I got it running and fixed it. And I just never brought it over until this year. Because I just, I don't know, it's tough. A lot of people. You know, you get the jukebox going, and there's a lot, a lot of things that you can't do in here. You can't talk, you know. But there's a lot of people that do like the jukeboxes. Uh, the William Scorpion. Uh, you've all seen this sitting in the garage for years too, and finally got it all squared away and brought over this year as well. Nice little machine. I uh, have one one display out and one segment here. I'm just waiting. I'm going to buy the complete um, set of 
LEDs for it and get it all set up. You can see I have one digit out on our first player as well. But it, it plays well. I put new coils, flipper coils in it because they had the wrong ones in it. They were really weak. And I do need to get two new flipper coils for up here because they're still running the old weak ones. And it, it works, but it doesn't shoot it all the way up around like it should. So I'm going to uh, get two new flipper coils and get that one done. If you remember this one, we we did some painting on the play field. We kind of got some of the uh, spaceship and all that all touched in and around the letters or numbers here uh, two, three, and five times. We got that all done. Uh, we had to do quite a bit up through here as far as uh, the just the black around the, each number. This one, the spaceship and all that was gone right through here, right around the action kicker. And I put that all back in. And, you know, it, it looks good. Decent, you know. If you walk right up to the machine, you, you know, you never notice it. So that that's the whole idea of doing the touch-ups on a lot of these. Is to just make it look good enough to where if somebody comes up to play it, you're not looking at it and it got it looks like, you know, a little five-year-old sat there with crayons and, and done it. So it, you know, it turned out pretty good. This is a wide body. Uh, this is my only wide body machine I have. Uh, I would like to have another one, which is a Stern Big Game. This one too, I did a lot, a lot of work on that back glass, touching up the back glass. You know, you can see some of the lines in through it, but I did do the best I could on it and same thing if you're not really trained to look at it and look for imperfections you don't see it and that's the whole idea of doing some touch-ups on this stuff instead of paying uh, I think the wide bodies are almost 400 for a new back glass so if I, if I can touch them up and reuse the back glass to make them look decent that's what I do over here cabinet was in good shape on the Williams. I just did a little bit of touch up on the cabinet. Some of the yellow, uh, a little bit of the green and on the back. But yeah, this is really a nice machine. It turned out good. There's a playlist on this. There's going to be a playlist on just about every machine in here because everything I buy is usually non-working because that's what I like to do is I like to fix them and then bring them over for people to enjoy again. But yeah, nice little machine. Uh, and then out in the main, main arcade. Yeah, you're gonna hear my lighthouses the whole time we're in here. And Gravity Hill. So hopefully, you know, just kinda, I can talk over it hopefully. But yeah, I got some gumball machines and that in here, or change machine. I have a big 50, 50 inch TV sitting up in the top there that we can uh, hook up a DVD player or whatever and you know I kind of set things up where I have dice and out here and in here at the other little table I have sitting over here I have cards and that for and Yahtzee and stuff like that for people to to play like I said we're, I'm kind of closing up so everything's going to be kind of scattered around so just kind of bear with me just wanted to get get this get through this so I can yeah okay our entertainer gumball machine if you remember that one if you don't remember it uh, this one was the same thing I got this in and it didn't work and now it works you know we went through it worked through all the problems in it and it's working again it, it's fun little machine. Every, uh, all the kids play it. You, you know, gumballs. I mean, you can't go wrong with a gumball. What the hell? Okay. Well, my jukebox is coming. Okay. Sorry about that. I I could have canceled it, but I I wanted to listen to it. And a lot of you know that, that music is kind of my. Uh, getaway keeps me from running down the road screaming after life kicks you right in the crotch so anyway I had to sit there and listen to it <laughs> uh, 
let's let's do the lighthouses. I'll do the lighthouses, and then I can get them turned off so we don't have to listen to it the whole time we're we're walking around here. And I, you know, kind of bear with me. I after the season, I have uh, some maintenance to do in here on some of these machines, so kind of bear with me if you see one that's not you know totally working like it should but the lighthouses both of these I bought three of them and I was able to take all three of them and build two really good ones both of these work yeah both of these work really really well uh, there was just a lot of a lot of minor stuff that uh, I had to do with these uh, there's there's playlists on these like I said I'll mention that every time uh, cabinets were in decent shape so I didn't have to do a whole lot to the cabinets uh, mainly what it was was boards we worked through some board work some board problems and lighting uh, most of the lighting was gone looks like one of my lens is about ready to fall off but same thing kids love the the lighthouses they play the heck out of these things they they were worth their work their weight in gold this summer they really I was really amazed how well they did uh, kids really like redemption machines and same with gravity hill this is one of the hardest games to play and win anything on but every time you you play it you do get a rubber ball you get one of those little little rubber super balls so most of the time the kids don't care in fact there's one right there kids don't care if they can they don't get anywhere on it as long as they get that that stinking little rubber ball which is good so uh, and the same thing, that thing's worth its weight in gold. It makes money. Claw machine, uh, you, I have one sitting over there that I'm um, beating my head up against the wall to get it going. Uh, claw machines make money. Uh, most of the time when I have really good stuff in the claw machine, I put those little spiky rubber balls in there and they really like the spiky rubber balls. A lot of times at the end of the week when I empty my machines, this one is always the top money maker, is my claw machine. So if you have an arcade, make darn sure you have a claw machine in it. You can see right now it's been picked over pretty well. I do have some more spiky rubbers to put in it uh, in the spring. And I'll, I'll get some other stuff. I need some, uh, a lot of my smaller stuff got picked out. So I need to get some smaller stuff in. I have Mario sitting back here in the corner and, and he's too big. He won't, won't pick it up, but it's a draw. You see a licensed Mario sitting in there and somebody, they, they try their best. I, I'll come in at the end of the week and it'll be out here in the middle. <laughs> You know, they're, they're working it over. Somebody probably will eventually pull it out of there, which is fine, because it, then it, they don't have made a lot of money. Gorgar, first talker, first talking pinball machine. Another Williams, gorgeous machine. I love, love Gorgar. Gorgar was my first solid state pinball machine I ever played as a kid. And I played this when it first came out. And I think it was 78 is when this, 78 or 79. Uh, somebody can correct me if they want, but that's when Gorgar came out and it was the first talking pinball machine. This one, same thing. Uh, she was just about all of her was missing and a lot of him was missing him. <laughs> and I had some of Gorgar missing and down through here was missing, I, I retouched all of this. And the only thing that I wasn't happy with was her hair. For the life of me, I could not match that light brown hair. So there's a, so she has a nice uh, dark brown streak in her hair. 
but came out good. Back glass, same thing. Just touched it up uh, where needed. He, Gorgar, really looked like crap. So you can see the lines in it, but you don't see the light shining through, so you don't notice it when you first walk up on the machine. And one of the hardest colors to, to duplicate is flesh tone. Flesh tones in yellow. God, I hate it. This one cabinet was decent. I uh, did a little bit of touch up on the black and a little bit of red. There's a cigarette mark on it there, but you know, they. And I got red legs for it. Old red legs. It turned out really nice. It, this is another really good machine that uh, makes a lot of money. Star Trek. There, there is a series on Star Trek. You know, if you have not seen the series on Star Trek, please go look at it. I mean, if you've seen this machine when I first got it, it this it's a totally different machine now since I got it up and running and repainted. I mean, I redid this one completely. Back box, cabinet. The cabinet was just there was hardly any paint left on the cabinet. It had snake skins in it. The board sets were just totally falling apart. I mean, it, it sat and sat and sat. Playfield on this, there was absolutely nothing. If you want to go look, and I'm not pulling your leg, that this whole area up through here, most of that was all gone. And I put everything back in on this machine all the mostly all the yellow blue some of the spaceship the enterprise uh, all the stars uh, this one was really a tedious job but it, it was it's well worth it this machine works really really well this has a trans light in it not a back glass which was really nice so it, it, it turned out really good. I did um, LEDs on this one. This one has the uh, lock thickles, uh, those little LEDs on a, on a kind of a little stick. So that's why they call them the lock thickles, or they're a light on a stick, like a popsicle. Turned out good. Uh, lightning. Lightning, the back glass was totally trash. That's why it looks like crap. I mean, it, it'll do for now until I buy a new back glass for it. Play field on this was actually in, in good shape. All I had to do was just tear it down and clean it all up and get it working. This one has a new uh, MPU in it, but I cannot set it to take quarters, it'll only go on free play. So I have to watch when people are in here that they're, they are actually putting quarters in it, not just playing it. I have one, one display that went out, and I have one display that went out, and I have one display that went out. So I have plenty of maintenance to do here, getting all my displays. Uh, thank God it's all four, four players because all summer, I don't think anybody's ever played for. This one, Pool Shark, actually I bought and brought down from Cleveland. This one was actually running and working. This is the only machine, only pinball machine that I bought that actually worked. Now I've had to do uh, uh, do stuff to it. I had a switch that went bad hit under my Sharky Seafood Bar and right now my shark's not working, so I have some maintenance to do on this one as well. And we'll get into it. This one, it's been uh, probably three or four years since this one has had new new rubbers and the play field cleaned and waxed. So uh, I'm going to pull this one out of line. We'll bring it out here in the middle, out in here, and we're going to tear the play field down on this one when it's warm. And we're going to put new rubbers on it, and we're going to clean the play field, do a little touch-up. I have where the ball comes down and drops off of our rail here. 
you can see the big chip as soon as the as soon as it lights back up. There we are. So I got a little bit of black to put back in there. And this side, this side is uh, I got a little bit of white down in there. I may may do something, but this this machine plays awesome. This is one of my favorite machines that I play all the time. Is yeah, full sharks. Sharkies shoot out. Right now it's acting like it should. This one I have to pull the driver board back out of it. I got to go through the driver board on this one. If, when it sits here for a while, it'll just start puking, puking balls out. And when you're playing it, it acts like it's on multi-ball and it'll just start spitting balls out. I reworked over the, the MPU on this one. This one had really bad acid damage and we redid the MPU on it. There was no damage on the driver board, but it there's something going on with the driver board. We need to work work it backwards on that one and see if we can't figure out what's in common with the the uh, kicker here and there's an automatic kicker that I have disconnected for multi-ball. When it comes out you have to actually shoot the ball, you know, the second ball up. The automatic kicker when it comes on it locks on and burns the coil up. So I'm thinking we have you know to, an issue here where it's related. Hopefully it is. I don't think it's the MPU anymore. For the longest time I thought maybe the MPU was bad, but I, I do believe we have a problem in our driver board and we will pull that driver board out of there and take it over and work it over. That's my newest machine. Sharky Shootout's my newest machine. That's a 2001. Uh, soccer. Gottlob's Soccer. This is a 1976. This one I uh, brought up from Southampton, TNT Amusement. I bought that off of Todd Tuckery, uh, and it didn't work. He usually doesn't mess around with uh, the EMs. So this one I reworked it. It was just basically dirty contacts and just from sitting it just would not work. I put in all new inserts on this one and I have LEDs in this. It's not lit up right now because when you first turn soccer on it's always on tilt. This one, same thing with this, 1976. I played soccer when I was a kid when it first came out and it was brand new. That's why when Todd had it on his uh, best offer or sale, I went down and I, I grabbed it. Sharky shootout. No, full shark, sorry. <laughs> Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo is another one. Uh, I think that's a 75 or 76 as well. This one also came up from TNT Amusement, Todd Tuckery down in Southampton, Pennsylvania. Uh, this machine, same thing. It was just didn't work. You know, it's just a matter of going through it, cleaning every stinking contact, and getting everything all square to work. Way cleaned, new rubbers, uh, clean wax play field on both of them, and I put LEDs in this one too as well. And I'm not a big fan of this machine. I mean, a lot of people like playing it, but I'm I'm not a fan of just uh, out hole out lanes. I like the in lane machines. That's why you can tell these are a little older because they didn't put the in lanes on it. They always put just out holes. So I'm pretty sure this is this may even be a 73 or four. Uh, it's been so long since I've you know messed with them. I just do a little maintenance to them. You know I get a few things that aren't working. I can pull them out and get them back up and running, and then they're back making money. Space time. There's a quite a bit of a series on space time. I went up to Cleveland I picked this up from an old operator. Space time didn't have a back glass. That's a brand new back glass in it. Uh, the play field was totally crap. It was just totally filthy. 
The centerpiece, uh, you couldn't even see the, the tunnel. It was so badly uh, scratched or whatever. So I cut out a new, I think I cut out, no I didn't. I, I buffed that one out and got that cleaned up really good. This machine plays well too. It's an older one. I think this is also like a 73 or 74. Just has the out, out lanes. <clears throat> but fun little machine. Same. Put a brand new back glass in it and just totally went through it and got it all cleaned up. And now it's here being enjoyed by other people and making some money. Target Alpha. Target Alpha. Where the hell did I get Target Alpha? Oh, that come up from uh, Maryland. Target Alpha come up from Mar Maryland. So did so did uh, Sharky Shootout. So did Star Trek, Gorgar, and and Lightning. All those come up from an auction down in Maryland. <clears throat> this one, this was total crap. You know, this is another really good series if you want to, if you're interested in seeing me rework uh, an EM pinball machine. This one has brand new plastics on it, brand new rubbers, uh, and there's still a lot of, there, a lot of the stuff was here, but just totally trashed. I uh, did some repainting up top here on this one, and I think I did a little bit of touch up down in the middle here, and it, it turned out really well as well. Now it's playing really good and I'll tell you what, that that drop target bank is one monster of a drop target bank. That's all one drop target bank up top there. They didn't split that up. That's all one. Now that one was fun to, to clean and get working. Flippity flop. Flip flop's a really nice machine. This is a 76. Uh, I don't care to play it much because, I, again, I'm not a fan of trying to bounce my ball up. This side never works. This side you can do. And you can see I have posts that are deteriorating in on this one. This one, the plastics were all warped. Uh, we sat down and worked over the plastics and got them all working, or working, straightened out so it actually looks good. Uh, I don't think I had a whole lot of touch up to do on this. This one I buffed out completely and the play field really come out nice on this. And basically it was just dirty from sitting. Uh, we took the, the flip unit, flip flop unit out of it and set it down on the bench and we tore it down completely, buffed everything, cleaned it all up and and you can see it, it it turned out good. Cabinet was good on this one as well. This came from an auction, uh, Cox auction. Flip flop and then we have our cinema, our Chicago coin. This is another top money maker. Uh, our Chicago Coin Cinema, this is a 75, 76, excuse me. Uh, this one's out of order right at the moment. I have some work to do on it. When you turn it on and start a game, it just wants to sit there and keep uh, cycling. And the score motor wants to keep running, so I, I just put it uh, out of order and I figured I'd get to it this winter and we'll get it back up and running. There's a really nice playlist on this one too. We did a lot of repainting on the play field. The cabinets have all been repainted on this one. So eventually I'll get get this back up and running. This has four holes up through the middle and when you hit it up through here the first one it sits there it'll collect bonus or add bonus and points and then it kicks it up to the next one and again and again and it, it's really really a neat machine you spell out star and your specials come on so it, it's really a nice machine I just have not had the time to actually go through this one again I gotta get it going again because everybody wants to play uh, the old Chicago coin cinema and it's just a matter of uh, making the time and pulling it out in the middle when it's warm enough and reworking it and figuring out why it's doing it and the schematics for this thing really suck 
They're so small, I have to use a magnifying glass to read the schematics on it. So it, it's, it's tough. Ah, uh, Knight Rider. Another uh, 78 solid state Bally. This one, this one was a was a mess too. The play field was a total mess on this. Uh, about 75, 80 percent of this has all been repainted the color. Here, Night Rider was okay, and my my semis were okay, but my lanes here, my shooter lanes were total crap. And so all this has been reworked and repainted. It actually come out pretty decent, uh, you know, with a low light. Yeah, pull sharp, rack them up. <laughs> but it nice machine. This machine plays really well. We got it all squared away. It has, I think, one new board set in it. I think the MPU, no, not the MPU. I think the, oh, I'm not sure. It's been so stinking long. It, it, this machine has been so reliable. I have not had to do anything to it. After I got it done, it's been all went all summer. It has not screwed up on me at all, which was really amazing uh, with the condition it was in. Ah, Sinbad. This one, if you leave this one off for for a long period of time, it'll when it comes back on, it has 51 games on it. <laughs> but if it, if I turn it on every every um, every day. It always it'll stay at zero. This is a Gottlieb. This is a System One, which is a 78, 1978 Gottlieb System One. That the actual board set in it I reworked and it is working. Ex you know, except for the that. Well, anyway, and I have my bottom two. This display works most of the time. This one is pretty dim. When I first got this in and got it up and running you couldn't even read the displays they were so dim so I just let it on, just left it stay on for days and let them burn back in and they brightened back up the top two came out good the bottom two the number three is okay yeah. four is pretty pretty light and it has one one segment out on it so same thing eventually I will put brand new LCDs in this one but for right now, nobody plays four players on this. I hate this machine. I totally hate four flippers. I'm sorry. You can like them all you want. I hate four flippers. Cabinet was decent on this one. Uh, it's a little faded here and there, but it is decent. The biggest problem with this one was Sinbad was gone. A lot of Sinbad, his, his face, right up through here, this was all gone. And I, I sat down and I put Simbad back on here. Uh, I kind of missed a little bit on his eye, but to, uh, to the layman, if you just walk up and you're going to play it, you do not see that his face was gone. I mean, the mouth was gone, mustache, nose, everything was gone right up through here. That whole area was gone, and I put him all back in. Turned out good. Plastics, same thing. I think the plastics were all warped up, which most of them are on the on the older machines. And I sat down, straightened them all out, and got. And now it, it's a good playing machine if you like four flippers. I hate four flippers. Them and banana flippers. I cannot stand banana flippers. Ugh. All right. Video games, uh, our Midway Cruise in USA, that one, when I got that in, that one did work as well. So there, I haven't had to do much to it at all, except put a new battery in it for for the date and time and, and you know, to keep all your, all your, you know, yeah, that stuff. But, Tekken, Tekken Tag, Tekken Tag Tournament, this has just Tekken in it. When I got it in, that's what was in it, was just tacking. 
same thing. We worked worked through it and got got it up and running, and then that's when I found out that it had the original Tekken board set in it, not Tekken Tag. But you know, a lot of people don't care; they just want to play Tekken. So I kind of leave it that way. When I do come across a Tekken Tag at tournament, I will put it in there and make it, you know, all original. Silver Strike, another one of my favorite machines that I play quite often. It, this one, uh, you had nothing. Uh, we pulled the computer out of this one and rebuilt the computer in it. I had to recap the video card, display card, because that's kind of, you know, that's what goes in this, so that's what you have to put in it. You can't kind of change them out. I guess you can, but, you know, no, it was no big deal. This actually has, like, a computer in it. So we reworked it, and we worked over the, the trackball, and we cleaned everything up. We had to, in fact, yeah, we had to uh, rework the chassis on the monitor on this one, too. And that one, Silver Strike's working good. I love, I love playing that machine. Uh, War Final Assault actually worked when I got it. I didn't have to do much to it except clean it all up, so I got lucky on that one as well. Yeah, we're getting to that one. Time Soldiers. There was a there's a long playlist on Time Soldiers. It was in pretty bad shape when we got it in. This came out of a this was in a garage that uh, guy just wanted to get rid of it. We have a brand new. Uh, <laughs> God, for the life of me now, I got to get through this so I can uh, get done. Uh, control panel overlay. I have a brand new control panel overlay on this one. Uh, we re I actually put an LCD in this one because the monitor was totally dookie. And we cut everything down, got brand new key molding on it. This machine really looks nice. It's, it's a hard game to play. It doesn't do very well because it is so hard. But, you know, I know there's people out there that are really good at it. But everybody that plays it, you know, a couple of quarters and they're done with it. Die Hard. Uh, my monitor chassis finally has an aftermarket monitor chassis in it, and that thing is totally crap. If, if any of you are looking at those aftermarket monitor chassis, don't do it. They're not worth it. Uh, so I have to get a monitor chassis for this one. Uh, it works. It's just that is total crap. Uh, let's see, I think I already went over Gravity Hill. Yeah, Gravity Hill. And of course our change machine, yes. And you know, there's Pull Shark going nuts again. And don't think I'm running out of room just because this room is full of machines. I still have the whole upstairs. I still have the whole upstairs put machines in. Right now it's just kind of cluttered with tools and that for me working, but I have the whole upstairs to work with. So don't don't worry about room. I have dart machines. I, uh, we're working on top 10. I have Black Pyramid. I have Vagabond, which is a dying machine that I was thinking about bringing in. And I have one more, I think it's uh, Gotlip Big Indian. That It's a total basket case that'll be fun to redo that one as well. That'll be a really good series and a long one as well. It's buried in my storage unit, along with other machines. I have another Silver Strike in there that works. Uh, I have another, I have Tekken 3 that works. And because we reworked it, there's a 
series on Tekken 3. And I have some other machines over there too. I have some empty cabinets that I have some board sets that I can work through and put and make our own. Like I'm trying to put together either Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man because I have a lot of people asking to have Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man in here because that's what they played when they were kids. So we're gonna, I'll, I'll get to them. It's just a matter of uh, time and right now it's just a matter of getting the ambition to actually work on anything. But yeah, that's the arcade again. Kind of went over everything this time so everybody sees what the hell is going on and what I have over here. I just wanted to do something a little different because like I said I just just couldn't get myself to sit in front of the camera. This way I can hide behind the camera and nobody can can see me. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this out on Sunday or if it's going to be Monday morning. So hopefully everybody kind of bear with me and uh, once I get my my poop in a group, I will start hammering on everything again as hard as I can. So I hope you enjoyed the, enjoyed the little tour through the arcade. Till next Sunday, everybody take care, have a great week, and I'll see you.